May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be to the greater honor and glory of God. Amen. Amen. Many of you know the baptismal covenant by heart, that these words, will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? And then we reply, I will with God's help. In ancient society and culture, they didn't understand or delineate between the mentally ill, the mentally disabled, and what was truly evil. Sometimes, even in today's society, we still treat the mentally ill and mentally disabled like they're cursed or born evil. I know particularly one uh, story of a man who has a son or a brother who is uh, somewhat uh, disabled, mentally disabled, and even in the church, uh, they were rejected. And so even today, he's loath to go into a church because he thinks that we're hypocrites in the way that they treated uh, his brother. And I can understand that a little bit. Libby and I, one of the shows that we like to watch is uh, called The Midwife. And if you've seen it, uh, the, the birth uh, scenes are just amazing and to see all those new babies. But in this season, there was an episode, and this is taking place in the mid-1960s, but there was a baby, the story was that, that there was a woman who she was, uh, I think it was a daughter, was unable to give birth. And so her mother, who was still uh, young enough, uh, at birthing age, had decided that she would be a surrogate for her daughter. And so when the time for the birth came, and the child was born, it was found to be uh, different. And the, t the term that was used was mongoloid. And this is a name that is derived, it was first noticed and derived in uh, 1862. And the, the facial features are, because of their flattened, are similar to people who are, are residents of the country, nation of Mongolia. But it took over a century uh, from when John Langdon Down first called uh, those uh, children born that way, Mongoloids, for that to finally change. And the, now we call it Down Syndrome. And to call somebody like that a Mongoloid is, is quite an insulting slur. I grew up with, uh, when I was a child, I went to elementary school with a, a boy named Jesse. And um, he was considered retarded. He was wild, uncontrollable behavior. He was a menace to the town. And I, 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 when I think of how wild he was, I, I hear the story of this Yeniseret with the demons. and. You know that even trying to control him, he would uh, he would uh, try to wrestle out his way and squirm his way out of people's arms. I'm talking about Jesse. When my father died, many people came to his funeral, and many of my friends came to his funeral. And this young man came up and you know wanted to shake my hand, and he looked at me and he says. You don't know me. You don't recognize me, do you? And I said, no, I'm sorry. And he said, I'm Jesse. And I'm not using his last name. And I was shocked. and Because I really thought that Jesse would have been institutionalized or that he would have ended up doing something really wild, going off the deep end and just being, ending up in prison. But he told me the story that, uh, that he had learned how to, been taught how to swing a hammer and to use a saw, and that he was on a construction crew and was doing quite well. It was like day and night from this wild little kid, you know, who could barely spell cat, C-A-T, 
for a dog, D-O-G, who was, who was a very productive member of a construction crew and just seemed as tame as, as could possibly be. After modern medical, uh, that, you know, he, he had changed from being that wild person to being tame. Then I, you've heard many stories of my brother Roy, uh, 10 years older than me, who was called retarded and slow. And ironically, his nickname was Speedy. In the, after, wasn't maybe a couple years after my father died, my mother had been, uh, had been falling, tripping over the carpet and, and um, having difficulty and, and uh, we just kind of thought she was clumsy. But then finally a, a, she went to a doctor and the doctor said, this, this isn't normal aging. And I want to go get some tests. And it turned out that she had myotonic muscular dystrophy. And of course, it didn't take a genius then to figure out that Roy had it as well and had been born with it. And then it wasn't a long before it didn't take a genius to figure out that, that my sister, who had died at birth, uh, Delilah, also probably had myotonic muscular dystrophy. It affects not only muscle development, but also organ development. So, you know, something it, it affected his, his brain development, even though the brain, as I learned, the brain is not a muscle, but still it, it affects uh, those kinds of organs. So Roy was, was, ended up finally reading on about an eighth grade level, and, but he got hooked up with this company called Shares in Shelbyville. It's kind of like the uh, Easter Seals Rehabilitation Center uh, up on the, the north side of town. And Roy ended up gaining a sense of independence and they helped him learn uh, to, to drive a car. He got his driver's license and uh, lived in his own apartment uh, with some, he needed a little financial help. I mean, doing budgeting and those kinds of things. Uh, but he lived an independent life. But he too could have possibly been institutionalized. And people like Jesse and Roy, growing up, because of their uh, disabilities, and were teased and bullied. And I know my brother Ray had to defend Roy on many occasions from bullies. In today's gospel reading, we have the story of the man in Gennesaret who they, the, Jesus and the disciples cross the sea and the first thing that they encounter is this, this man with these demons. Now this is a miracle story, but I often wonder sometimes if this was a miracle of an exorcism or this was a healing or both. That maybe instead of all of these demons, that maybe this person was just mentally handicapped or schizophrenic or something of that nature. The focus is on the, though, that for me, is on the reaction of the people of Gennesaret. That when they feared this man, but they feared him in a normal way. They, they, it, his wildness had become normalized to them. And so they knew what to expect. They knew how to care. They knew how when he was in his wild phases, you know, to chain him up and, you know, keep him away from other people. And that would be their equivalent of institutionalizing uh, somebody that to, to set them aside and marginalized. But the real fear for them was when Jesus healed the man because they didn't know how to react, just as I didn't know how to react to Jesse when he seemed so normal as an adult and had an adult life. That they had, that they were ostracized and they have a disordered, distorted view of what's normal, what's extraordinary, and what's odd. They even feared Jesus because of his ability to heal. That was not a normal thing. It was extraordinary to them. And so they feared what Jesus might do to them. What is normal? 
<laughs> who gets to who gets to define what's normal? Do we have the power to define what's normal, or do we give that power to God? Jesus says, "Judge not, lest you be judged." And he also said, the measure you give will be the measure you get back. How do we treat the person who is bipolar or schizophrenic when, when they're in that manic phase? Are we afraid of them? Do we want to distance ourselves? Or how, and how do we treat them when they're on their meds and they're normal? Do we keep them at a distance wondering if if that's truly a healing or not, or if they're gonna change? Do we treat them with suspicion? Do we keep them at arm's length? What about the people that cannot be cured? Do we see Christ in them? Do we love them as our neighbor? Do we respect them as a human being and a child of God? Or do we fall back into the ancient practices and treat them as unclean, cursed, possessed, or even evil. With this latest round, the spate of shooting, you know, there's two sides to this. One is, you know, guns are bad. The other is to think about, um, you know, to call these people evil. But then when you find out the stories, that they were oftentimes had mental illness or were bullied. And bullying can bring on mental illness. Now, don't get me wrong, there is evil in this world. I have seen it, I know it. But a baby isn't born evil. A baby doesn't come into this world evil. Evil is either taught or instilled by society's rejection of the of that abnormal person. Before the service, we were talking about, in the sacristy, we were talking about uh, people, even in our own community, who are being raised in dysfunctional families and are probably going to continue to be dysfunctional and living dysfunctional lives, probably end up in prison along with their parents and grandparents. Maybe if we begin to treat the mentally ill and the mentally disabled as beloved children of God, then maybe we will find that they're a blessing to us. We already know just from examples that those people are children who were born and called mongoloids or Down syndrome are oftentimes the most wonderful people in the world and they're a blessing. Amen.